So we're going to start today with angle of elevation and angle of depression, which you have or should have covered in previous courses. The main thing to know about angle of elevation or angle of depression is you always start with the horizontal. So the initial side in this angle, the initial side is the horizontal line. The initial side is the horizontal line. We always use angle of elevation or angle of depression. Comparing it to the horizon, the horizontal. In order to use angle of elevation or angle of depression, you have to have a horizontal line. Now, from there, if it's an angle of elevation, the angle will rotate up. To the terminal side, it'll rotate up from the horizontal. That's how you know it's an angle of elevation. If it's an angle of depression, the angle will rotate down from that initial side. So angle of elevation goes up, angle of depression goes down. Questions on that? Always start with horizontal. So we'll do some uh, real life applications. Uh, there's a career you could go into, a surveying. There's little people that are you know, looking through like little machines on the side of the road. Sometimes you see them and they're measuring distances that can't actually go and measure with a tape measure. They're doing it using trigonometry. So here, um, a surveyor is standing 115 feet from the base of the Washington Monument. So here's my Washington Monument. I think there's some windows up there. That's where her refugee would have been going to place. So he's 115, or she is 115 feet from the base. The the little machines use to measure is going to tell us the angle of elevation to the top of the monument. Try that again. Try that again. The angle of elevation is 78.3 degrees. So we find a horizontal, which happens to be the ground, and we elevate up. That's where my 78.3 degrees goes. With that little piece of information, we can find how tall the monument is. So as you can tell, I just drew a right triangle. Mm -hmm. And according to that right triangle, we always need an angle. Well, we don't always need it. Let me start that over. According to the right triangle, since I have an angle and I need to find a side, what side, according to the angle, is it? Opposite. And according to that angle, what side do we know the value of? Adjacent. And we've already studied trigonometry. We should already know that opposite and adjacent are involved in which trigonometric ratio? And So I'm going to set up the tangent equation. Tangent of an angle. So the angle is 78.3 degrees. Tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Now when you've done this in the past, there are different ways of solving this equation. The way that I prefer, but you don't have to prefer, but the way that I prefer is just put this over 1 and cross multiply. That's my preference. You don't have to do it that way. You can do it other ways. Um, when we cross multiply, we cross multiply up and we put the equal sign in between. So when I cross multiply up, I get x over here by itself. On this side, I have 115 first, then tangent 78.3. You always have the angle written after the tangent. And it is easiest, you the least amount of parentheses, if you put the 115 in front when you type it in your calculator. So yeah, we are going to type it into our calculator. 
Um, we are going to type it into our calculator, but what mode does the calculator need to be in if we're typing in degree? degree. Make sure your mode is degree mode. <laughs> Correctly, and you're in the correct mode. Did you get that the Washington Monument is approximately 555.314 feet. Because the directions were how tall is the, the monument, so that's where I put a variable. So I wanted to use this side because that's what I want to solve for. And then that one's given, so of course I'll just have that. Next question is, you are in an apartment looking out the window while playing with a laser measure tool. You notice a car driving by 80 feet from your window. You also measure your window 40 feet above the ground. What is the angle of depression from you to the car? If you're not sure where to start, draw a picture. So what information? Um, we measured at your 40 feet up. Gosh. 40 feet up. And you also measured that the car is 80 feet from your window. Where do I put 80? Think about when you use this laser to measure should be the hypotenuse that's 80 feet. Your laser is not going to go down and then measure horizontally. And the car is not up in the air, so it's not going to measure straight up to the car. It's going to measure this way. The 80 feet is going to be the hypotenuse. So if this said from the base of the mm -hmm. then okay. But since I told you this laser thing, you have to think about how a laser works, right? I'm sure you play with them all the time. I'll have like five of them. Yeah, I hope so. And then, since you do, you can go up in your you can go up in your house and find the angle of elevation for depression. All right, guys. So we have some measurements in there, and now we have to find the angle of depression. What do I know about where the angle of depression is located? Here? No. Yeah, wrong. What is the the uh <laughs> um, <laughs> what is the angle of depression like? I just told you on the first page. What's like the uh, how does it start where? Horse it's Horizontal piece where it goes down. 
That is the angle of depression right here. That's the angle of depression. But that's not how I write triangle. But that's okay, because you took geometry. Most of you have taken geometry. <laughs> that's all right, she can catch up. Um, maybe you've done this already. You've probably done this already. Where if you have, these are both horizontal, even though I didn't draw them very well. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> these are horizontal. They're both horizontal, so they're parallel lines. And then this right here is a uh, transversal that cuts through those parallel lines. So this angle right here is congruent to that angle right there. Alternate interior angle. <laughs> well, you all were talking while well, I explained it. One more time. Too many colors. I can, I can, I can, I can undo that. I can make it not so colorful. Let's make it all in black. All in black. Here we go. This is horizontal. This is horizontal. Both are horizontal, they're parallel. This is a transversal that cuts through two parallel lines. So the theta right here is congruent to this angle here because they're alternate interior angles. So I can find this theta or you could find this angle here. And you just have to subtract it from 90 to the number. Either would be nice. So I'm going to find that angle. And according to that angle, 40 feet is which side? Opposite. And 80 is the hypotenuse. What uses opposite and hypotenuse? The sine of the angle that I don't know is equal to 40 over 80. So I have to solve for theta. How do you get rid of sine so we just have theta left over? Sine inverse. Sine inverse. That will cancel there, but I have to do it over here also. Sine inverse. So I will get theta equals sine inverse of 40 divided by 80, and I will use my calculator. And we'll still be in degree mode, we're going to find our answer in degree. Does anybody know the answer before we go But if it wasn't such an easy one, because it was sine of what angle is that half? Ah, uh, yeah, we should know that one. Uh, but if you didn't know it, like if it wasn't a half, it was like 40 over 79 or something, then you definitely need to type it in your calculator and you should get 30 degrees. Okay. Not too bad. No. You just gotta draw the picture correctly. Now, those of you in physics, I know you've already talked about bearings. <coughs> but those of us that haven't been in physics probably have never seen this before. Probably. Bearings are just. Um, directions when we're navigating things, and bearings are written in different ways, but the way that you're going to see it in this assignment in the book, because a reason book for this one, um, you're going to see something like south, 35 degrees east. It always is going to start with north or south, and then we're going to go either east or west next. So the first thing this says south, so that means, okay, I'm going to go south. Then it says 35 degrees east, so I go towards the east, and I move it 35 degrees. That so that's where my theta is. What? That's what I am doing right here. And I do it too. I have to draw the picture for these. I have to. I'm a visual person. So this next one is north, 80 degrees west. So the first thing I'm going to do is start with for these uh, southwest, and, 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 yeah. and then I'm going to go north first. And it says go 80 degrees south. So from here, I'm going to rotate that 80 degrees. Oh, I said west. I said west. 
No. I don't know what that means, but we're just going to do it. So like, instead of doing north, uh, west of I don't know. I don't think so, but guess we'll find out what you're going to do. Okay, and then the third one says north 45 degrees east. So you first go north. Then from that direction, we rotate that initial side 45 degrees towards the east. And if you do not know which way east or west is, make sure you have a picture handy or can draw that picture. Isn't there a saying? Remember eating soggy waffles? <laughs> Remember eating soggy waffles? Whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah, you go east first and then you go north. I was asking for you. Hey, Mike. Hey, now. Now it gets challenging. Example five has given you a picture. Lucky. Not all the questions in the book give you a picture. We'll start out with a picture, but then they're going to start taking it away. So you have to know how to do this without the picture, so I'm going to explain the picture as we're going through the question. And I would definitely um, you know, uh, draw on that picture and label show. So this says we have a, a ship that leaves port at noon and heads due west 20 knots or 20 nautical miles per hour. So the first question is, where is the port? So if they're first heading west for 20 nautical miles per hour, you can see here the port going west. That's the first part. So we're going to start at A. This is going to be our port. <coughs> And then we're going to go to the west, and it says we're going 20 nautical miles per hour, but this says this is 40 nautical miles. Do you know why? Because we started at noon, and then I didn't keep reading. At 2 p.m., the ship changes its course. So we've gone for two full hours here. So if we're going 20 nautical miles per hour, and we go for two hours, we are now 40 nautical miles from A to B. Then it changes course, and it says we're now going to go north 54 degrees west. So they have drawn in a 90 degree north, so that you can figure out where 54 degrees west would be. So north 54 degrees west is here. I put it in for you, but you're going to have to draw some of these on your own. After that, it um, travels, and then it says find the ship's bearing and distance from the port of departure at 3 p.m. So that tells us how much further it traveled. So if our ending time is 3 p.m., how much more time did we go? An hour more. So 20 nautical miles further would be the distance that we went. And what it's asking us to find is... Two things. One of the things it's asking us to find is the distance between the port and the, where the ship currently is. So we're talking about a straight line distance. Okay, so we're going to have to find C. And then the other thing it's asking us to find is the bearing from port A to the ship, right? The ship's bearing, or is it asking for the ship's bearing to the port? I forget what about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, it's asking what I thought. 
It's asking for the bearing. And we can see from our picture, the bearing is going to be, is it going to be north or south to get to V? It's going to be north first. The bearing is going to be north. And then after north, it's going to be which direction? <laughs> West. So we will have to find the bearing, and we'll have to find the west. Yeah. So it's and the number in between the degrees. So we'll have to find north, something degrees west. All right. So let's do that. Now I am going to do this. And all these answers, when I'm finding them, are going to be decimals. I'm not going to decimalize it until, like, the very last step. Just heads up. I'm going to write what I would type in the calculator, but I'm not doing it until the last step. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look over at a right triangle. Here's one. And this right triangle, I know the hypotenuse is 20. I can find side B because I know the hypotenuse and I haven't found it yet, but I can find this angle. How can I find that angle? 90 minus 54 degrees. So 36 degrees. <coughs> so I'm going to find B first. To find B, I'll just call it, I'll call it B. Um, that is the opposite of 36 degrees. I also know the hypotenuse is 20. So what is the opposite of the hypotenuse? Sine of angle B, or of not angle B, whatever angle it is, 36 degrees, is equal to opposite, or B, over... 20. I am not typing this in my calculator. I can hear the calculator is moving. I'm not typing in my calculator yet. So then I'm going to cross multiply this. And I'm going to get that B equals 20 sine 36. That is what B is. Now if I type it in my calculator, I'm going to get a horrible decimal, so I'm not going to do that yet. I'm just going to write like over here, B is 20 sine 36. That's like the exact answer that B is. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find D. Because if I found B, I can find D. There's two different ways I can think to do it, but I'm going to use trigonometry to do it. Because it's easier for me to write answers up there using trig. So to find D, we know that D is the adjacent adjacent to 36, and then we are also going to use our hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse is cosine. Cross multiply, D is going to be 20 cosine 36. So once I have this piece, I can now tell you the length of AC. A to C. Out. Oh, I'm not going to I'm going to write it, but what would you type in the calculator? Yeah, we're going to add 40 onto our D value. So we'll have, I'm going to write the 40 plus first. 40 plus, and whatever our D is, 20 cosine 36. And again, I haven't typed in my calculator yet, but I will eventually. But that's how long AC is. The reason why I did that is if I know 
side B. And I know side AC. And I want to find long side C. How can I do it? Now you here. So I'm going to be using the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. My a squared is going to be ac. Okay. So that's going to be parentheses. 40 plus 20 cosine 36 squared plus my b is going to be my b up there. You guys can see the picture still. 20 sine 36 squared. And that equals c squared. So how do I solve it for c? How do I get c by itself? Square root. There's no variables on the left side, so that I'm going to end up typing in my calculator. But to get c by itself, I have to square root both sides. So what I'm going to end up typing in my calculator now, here's where you're going to have trouble. <laughs> Especially if you have the older calculators, you're going to have a little bit of trouble, so you've got to practice this. When I type this in my calculator, if you have the newer calculators, you probably won't have problems. If I type this in my calculator, the older calculators, you're going to need an extra set of parentheses here, which I just put in red. You're going to need it. But go ahead and finally type it in your calculator to get through. Just type that in. I will put the answer up on the board so you can see if you typed it in correctly. And then if you're not typing it in right, call me over so I can help you with the parentheses because that's probably what's wrong. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have, do you have the older one? Yeah. Make sure you have just what you type in. Are you still going to type in or not? You have the older ones and you're not getting the answer. Well, if you're the newer ones also, if you're not getting the answer, please call me over so I can help you. You do not have. Okay. When it, thank you for bringing that up. When you type in cosine, your calculators are automatically opening a parenthesis, which you didn't close. So make sure, I know I just looked at yours for like two seconds and I can tell you're missing a parenthesis after the 36 before the square. So you can insert it. You don't have to retype everything. And then go right on top of that square, that's 6.24. You're, I've seen that, that answer, it's, you're missing a parenthesis somewhere. I know it is, but you typed it in multiple steps, so now I'm bound to word the parenthesis. No? <laughs> what did you delete that? Did you hit delete? Yeah, you should have two parentheses after that thirty six. Right here, this should say 36 parentheses, parentheses, square parentheses. Look where what yours says, so the very end. And you can you can hit second enter. You don't have to retype that. You can hit second enter. Oh, maybe. Yep, and then just change because the square on top of that parentheses. Maybe they should just yeah. get safely. Maybe they should have some stuff into it.
Well, that can't be the only thing because I know the square root of 60 is not 57 point something. I bet you get 7 point something or another because that's what Todd said over here. So then your parentheses are probably off. Really look at the parentheses. I think I have all the parentheses that you need in there. Uh, the red ones would be if you have the older calculators that don't like. The newer ones, um, Probably have it on mine. You can see if, if you have an older one, you can see what I'm talking about. But, uh, somewhere on mine. Yep, that's the right question. So if you have the newer calculators, like when you do the square root, it will automatically like tell that you're, everything's underneath it, but the, the older calculators just do that little square root and stop the line. You have to have those extra parentheses. But those of you that are messing up with the newer ones or even the older ones, it, it's the parentheses. So once you figure out what works for your calculator, May I suggest you write it down, how you type it in your calculator with parentheses, so that you don't keep making that mistake with the parentheses. You know, I, I hate for you to get everything right except for typing it in your calculator wrong, you know. So we're almost done. This is the C, but we also have to find the bearing. We already said it's going to be north something west. We've got to find the degrees that are going here. So when I go back up here and I'm looking at my picture, I want to find this angle right here. This angle here, if, um, if we find this one, so we can just subtract it from 90 to find that one. This one's inside the triangle, so that's what I think I'm going to do. To find this angle, I'm going to use sides that I know. I'm going to think about opposite, and I'm going to think about adjacent. What uses opposite and adjacent? Tangent. So I'm going to do tangent. Of the theta I'm trying to find is uh, opposite was 20 sine 36, and adjacent is 40 plus 20 cosine 36. And how do we get theta by itself? Do tangent inverse of that. And then whenever you get that answer, we're going to do 90 minus our answer. So you're going to need to try that on your calculator to see if you know how to type it in correctly. I'll put the answer up. So you can see if you're typing in the right. I don't remember what the decimal is. So you need to try and type that into your calculator to make sure you're typing it correctly, depending on which calculator you have. If you have the newer ones, you can do an add and fraction. Here's the newer one. And the bell is about to ring, so have it in. We have one more example for after lunch. <coughs> It's only our third example, so it's going to take a while. Have a good lunch. I'll see you when you get back.